What's going on? Welcome to the Sabob Show. My name is Eric. Today we're going to be doing a mock draft, a one round draft with trades. Um, this one's going to be on the fly. I don't have a script right now. I've got some ideas in my head I kind of want to toy around with. But I appreciate you being here. I'm not going to talk too much longer. We'll get into it. But my next video is going to be my first two round mock draft, I believe. Excited about that, but it's going to take a little more planning. I'm probably going to script that one out and know what I'm doing beforehand. And uh, I'm probably going to have some more videos coming out as well regarding you know, my rankings for these players and uh, talking about my feelings with the Senior Bowl, blah, blah, blah. More draft content, but not mock draft related. I know most people are here for mock drafts. I'm not forcing you to watch anything else, but I do want to make other content as well. So anyways, at pick number one, we got Chicago. Today, I kind of wanted to toy around with uh, doing more what I like, what I think makes sense for these teams and these, you know, the players, uh, what I would pick if I was the GM kind of thing. So uh, some of these picks probably will not happen, but I'm going to tell you, I have some opinions that are not very much the consensus as of right now. I think some of them will become more popular. We'll talk about that here in a second, but this is no surprise. Apparently Indianapolis is recommended. This is kind of a trade everyone's doing. It makes sense. I don't got to talk about it too much. If you're watching draft content, you kind of understand why the Bears want to stay in the top four and why the Colts want to move up. So of the Colts, trading up, gets accepted, and uh, this is another one. Oh, nope, did not mean to click that. Pardon me. Uh, this is where I'm going to start with uh, things people do not agree with. I'm probably taking C.J. Stroud at first overall here. I personally like Bryce Young the best. That's who I want to take right here. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. They're going to go one and two here in my draft, so it doesn't really change the draft board very much. But I think it's more likely the Colts go with a bigger, more accurate quarterback, I guess, rather than a... I mean, Bryce does everything good. I don't want to sound like I'm knocking him. He's easily the best quarterback, in my opinion. I have him as my top-rated player in the draft right now. But I just personally do not see the Colts wanting a uh, sub-six-foot quarterback. So they're going to take Stroud, another great player, who uh, I like him. I think he's going to be a very good player. There are four quarterbacks in this class I think will be drafted high. And uh, I like them all to a degree. At first overall, there are tiers. I'd prefer Stroud or Bryce Young at one. If we're picking at four and those two are gone, one of the other two is fine with me. I'm a Colts fan, if you cannot tell. But anyways, like I just said, moving on to two, uh, the Texans end up missing out on the first overall pick, but it doesn't matter. They're still going to get the best player in the draft. Bryce Young, phenomenal quarterback. Uh, not much to say. Again, if you're watching mock draft content, you know who Bryce Young is. And uh, if you know what you're talking about, you probably think the guy's pretty good at football. I do understand the uh, concerns about his size. Again, that's why I don't have him going number one. I think he's going to measure in a little smaller than some people think. And it's going to scare some teams off. Texans are not one of those teams. They are ready to take a gamble on a guy that could be as good as Bryce Young could be. And he will be. If he's healthy, I think he'll be a great player. The worry for me isn't, is he going to be too small to be a good quarterback? It's, is he going to be too small to stay healthy? So take the shot on him. It's not really a shot in my opinion. I think he's going to be great. I wish, as a Colts fan, I had confidence we would take him. I think he'll be the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think it's much of a conversation. But we likely won't, so I'm not going to talk about it all day. On to three with the Cardinals. This is a pick that I could see being a trade-down spot. Not going to do that right now because I don't necessarily know uh, where or what. You know, There's nobody picking super high that I think is going to jump up to three. Maybe the Raiders, Panthers for these quarterbacks, but I think they can wait a few picks and save some capital. And uh, if I'm the Cardinals, it's one of these two guys, Jalen Carter and Will Anderson. Uh, having Will Levis over Will Anderson on the PFF board is interesting, to say the least. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go with Will Anderson if I'm the Cardinals. Obviously, they need edge rush help anyways, and they lost J.J. Watt to retirement. These guys are 1A, 1B as far as defensive talent or non-quarterback talent. And uh, you just take whichever one you prefer. For them, I like Will Anderson. They're both great players. So on to Chicago, they traded down here at four. We know what they're doing. They're taking Jalen Carter. Whichever one of these two guys is left is who they want. They're happy with either. They're in a rebuild. Phenomenal player regardless. I'm going to talk about this pick here in a second. I'm going to take a drink. All right, Seattle at five. This is a trade down spot for me. I messed around with this in my last draft, and I liked it. And... Uh, <clears throat> I think it makes sense. There's not a defensive talent here that screams, you have to draft me. There are a couple guys I really like, but uh, they could use multiple picks on that defense. They could stand to move down. So 
what teams could look to trade up here? You got Will Levis on the board, right? Uh, quarterback, everyone hates. He's going to probably go pretty high. He has great traits. Not convinced he's a great football player, but I, as I say in every one of these videos, there will be a team that likes him a lot, and there will be a team that takes him and thinks they've got their guy. Now, the Raiders could go quarterback here. I think, honestly, they've got to have a plan in mind. They're not getting rid of Carr and admitting it to the world two weeks before the season is over without having some sort of plan. The uh, The reports where they wanted Brady, and we're going to do whatever it took to lure him here. He just retired. So uh, that kind of throws a wrench into things. I, I would assume they're smarter than that, though. They probably didn't just assume that Brady was starting next year. I hope not. So they probably want a quarterback. There are some free agent quarterbacks that you could look at, but I think the idea here is they're picking high enough to get one of these top four guys. Carolina's in the same boat. Sam Darnold is not not the franchise guy. I mean, he'll give you some games where he'll be like, okay, Sam Darnold can win us games. Are you ever going to win a playoff game with Sam Darnold? No. So uh, why be why be okay with having him as your starter when you're picking this high? I'm going to trade up if I'm Carolina. And I know all my viewers love this pick. Every time I do it, where are they at? They hate it. They do not like it whatsoever. But listen, hear me out. Hmm. Who's not interested? I don't know how to make this go through. Which team is not interested? All right, I'm just going to force it through. Obviously, the compensation will probably be like something more than, I don't know. I don't know what it'll be. I haven't thought that far ahead, but... The Panthers are going to trade up for a quarterback here. And uh, every single time I post a video, multiple Panthers fans, and I, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm really not upset about it. Make it very clear they do not like Will Levis. Make it very clear that I do not know what I'm talking about. And that's okay. Tepper has had a lot of links to Levis. There have been reports that they, uh, you know, like him. But, again, I'm going to mess around with what I would do today. And I'm going to make maybe some of those Panthers fans more happy. I'm not going to draft Will Levis. I'm going with Anthony Richardson. And I know he is just as controversial as Levis almost. And a good handful of those Panthers fans probably still aren't happy and probably think that that's also a bad pick. Now, hear me out. I do not understand the narrative of running quarterbacks being huge boomer bust. I understand he's raw. The hit rate on quarterbacks in general is low. It's not just running quarterbacks. Pocket passing quarterbacks as well are not usually very good. I mean, you, you're you taking about a 25% chance of getting your guy drafting top 10 at quarterback. Anthony Richardson, if you hit with him, is going to be the most electric player we've watched play NFL football ever. He has the biggest arm in this class. He's going to run a 4-4. He is built. He... And he's not as bad as a passer as people think he is. He's a good passer. He's got some accuracy issues to work on. Terrible footwork. But again, a one-year starter, the youngest quarterback in the class. Lots to work with with Anthony Richardson. I like him better than Levis. Honestly, quite a bit better than Levis. I still don't hate Levis like everyone else does. I think Levis is a... Uh, it depends who you talk to. Some people think he's going to be the next Herbert or Josh Allen. I think that's overkill. Some people think he's guaranteed Zach Wilson. I think that's also overkill. There's a happy medium. Levis is not a great football player. He has the tools to think maybe he could become one. Do I necessarily think that I would take him this high, top five? I'd probably prefer to land one of the other three. Like I said, if I'm swinging for the fences, Richardson is a lot better of a pick, in my opinion, because he could be a lot better than Levis. That's what I'm going with here. Not going to talk too much more about it because I just went on a tangent, but... I like Anthony Richardson more than a lot of people. I've had people tell me that he should not go in the first round. If you draft him, you're an idiot. He's going to go in the first round. He's going to have a great combine. He's going to have pro days and things to show out his arm, his athleticism. And you guys, maybe not all of you, but are going to love him. NFL teams are going to love him. And everyone's going to freak out about this Anthony Richardson guy. What could he be? He could be the best quarterback in football not named Patrick Mahomes. And I'm not saying he will be. But it's there. It's in him. So I'm taking him for the Panthers here. Now, the Lions. I'm not going to go Levis here. I think Jared Goff is a safer bet to uh, lead a playoff team. And I don't think they need a quarterback like some people do. I'm going to go Miles Murphy. 
It's him or Tyree Wilson here. A lot of people like Wilson. I uh, I don't dislike him. I don't like him as much as Miles Murphy, though. And I'm not going to talk about it too much. I think you just got to go defense top six for the Lions. Their defense was not very good. Uh, they might be getting a new defensive coordinator here soon. Aaron Glenn has been interviewing for jobs. So bring somebody new in if possible and get some new high-end talent in the draft. See what you could do on that defense because the offense is great. You want to be able to compete. Now, the Raiders. This is a team I just talked about, how they probably wanted Brady. And I understand that. And a part of me wants to say that they still want to go the veteran route because they probably do. I think if they were to draft a guy, they probably wouldn't have so openly decided to get rid of Carr ASAP. I think he could have stayed a year and competed with a rookie. So uh, if I had to make my best guess, I think I know no Raiders fans really want to hear it. This is probably a landing spot for a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo or something like that. But personally, that hasn't happened yet. As of right now, it's Stidham, and that's not who I'm rolling into next year with. And uh, Will Levis is on the board. Raiders fans, probably not excited about this, I understand. Levis is like the fucking plague. Wherever I put him in this draft, that fan base is not going to be happy. I understand it, and I appreciate you guys commenting. Let me know how much you hate it. I like to hear your opinions. Tell me why you don't think he's a good pick. Maybe you'll change my mind. I'm going to take him, though. You've got to take a swing. Like I said, similar to Richardson, not quite as good as Richardson as a prospect. Same idea, though, where he could be, could be very good. Is he going to be? Maybe not, but got to take a swing. You don't have a quarterback on the roster. You just traded for Devontae Adams. They're obviously trying to win. So now on to Atlanta. This is a pick that I think could go quarterback if one of the uh, first three guys I mentioned were available. Otherwise, Ritter probably gets a year, and uh, they'll go defense here. I like Tyree Wilson quite a lot. He's right here on the board. It makes a lot of sense. That's who I'm going with. Not too much to think about. Great edge rushing talent. They need it very, very badly. Good prospect. Now, uh, Seattle, they traded down to get some more picks. And uh, does it show me? No, it's just saying people are offering a trade. This is interesting. So, uh... Some people will go quarterback. I'm not going quarterback. I understand if Stroud was there, maybe, but probably not. Uh, everyone's going D-line here, and the guy I like is not the guy the rest of you guys like. And, uh, man, let me go look. Who who could we go with here? I, I try to beat around the bush too much in these videos. I am not a fan of Brian Brzee. I do not like him nearly as much as a lot of people do. Is this, yeah, okay. And I hate it. I feel like I'm hating. I understand he's a good player. I understand pre-ACL tear, he was a monster. He's huge. He was explosive. He's disruptive. And I see the idea. I just feel, I mean, he's a good player, man. I feel like I hate on the dude too much. I, I like Ika better. I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people. And I think if I took Ika in the top nine, Seahawks fans would scrutinize me, and rightfully so, to be honest. The other guy I'm thinking about here is Trenton Simpson, who I like quite a bit. Oh, I've realized this has everyone. Okay. Do I like him top ten? No. Man. So, I know it's not the most popular idea, but I am going to probably look. Does anyone do this? Probably not. I'm going to look at the corners here, and I understand they had some players on that defense, namely Tariq Woolen, Kobe Bryant had bright spots. They had they have a decent secondary, some good players in the secondary. But you get the pick of the litter, you trade it down, gain picks, and get the first corner off the board. Really defensive help in general. There's no front seven guy I really like this high, and I don't want to trade back again necessarily. So I'm going to go with Christian Gonzalez, who is my number one corner. Uh, really like him. I think if you can get him here, you're happy. No reason not to take a guy like that, in my opinion. So, again, not too much to say. I understand front seven is a bigger need, but I like taking the best corner over any of those front seven guys. Now, for the Eagles, this is another one where it really depends how the offseason goes. They're in the Super Bowl. Congrats, Eagles fans. 
I mean, we could see Jason Kelsey retire. Who knows? I mean, it says up here their needs are guard and center. I'm not going to touch O-line right here quite yet, but I do understand the idea of getting an offensive lineman. Uh, now, I'm curious what everyone else is doing because I, I have something in mind. I've done a lot of different things for, I mean, so has everyone else it looks like, for the Eagles. They're just such a good roster all around that it's kind of a luxury pick. It's not even their pick. They're picking top 10 and they're in the Super Bowl. I think you just look at the board and take a guy you love. And to me, it's the highest I've ever put him. I'm going to go Brian Branch. And again, I don't know how Eagles fans will feel about him at 10th overall. I think he is a phenomenal player. Best tackling defensive back in this draft class. Good in coverage. He played mostly slot at Alabama this last year, but he can play safety, free safety probably. And he can play in the slot. He's great in coverage. Again, a great tackler. He's a guy you can add to that defense. Young talent. When, like I said in previous videos, they have some aging defensive talent. It's still very good. But you got a top 10 pick. Why not make it even better? So that when those other guys start to fade out, you've got rising stars like Brian Branch, who I think will be a star immediately in this league. I'm not going to... I could make an entire video about Brian Branch and why I think he might be the best defensive player not named Jalen Carter or Will Anderson in this draft. I really, really like him, but I won't do that right now. Maybe another time. Now, Tennessee, this is a pick I do all the time. I'm going to go with Paris Johnson Jr., my favorite tackle in the class as of right now, and uh, they need O-line help. Lawan has declined badly. Their O-line has been poor. They're kind of in a little rebuild. They're kind of hoping it's more of a reload, but I'm not confident in that, and uh who knows? I think Paris Johnson's a great player. I Obviously, I just had him go top 11 as my number one tackle. So add talent where you can. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's really much risk in that pick. He's going to be good regardless. Now, uh, the Texans. Here's where I want to do something funky. Quentin Johnson is the popular pick here. He's been my pick for a little while. I've been watching a lot more film this week. It's kind of, I haven't posted in like a week and two days or so. I've been spending most of my free time doing film reviews and writing down my opinions, thoughts, you know, noting stuff about players, getting more into the film as we get further into the draft season. I do not think Quentin Johnson is my wide receiver one anymore. I like him. Uh, I think he's a, a good prospect. He fits with the NFL once in a receiver, but he's raw. He needs to get better at separating. And, uh, man. I'm trying to sit here and think. I don't I don't know if I want to do something I would do or like what will happen or like a mix, you know what I mean? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to go with what I I think. I'm not going to take him here because I don't think this is where he'll go. My number 1 receiver is Zay Flowers, and honestly when I sorted by receiver and realized PFF has him higher than I expected as well. But uh He's been pretty far down for a while, and I said in my last video I like him a lot, and I took him at like 20. And, uh, man, I'm tempted to take him right here. I'm pretty sure if I took Zay Flowers 12th overall, my comments would crucify me for it. But I think he's the best receiver in this draft class. It is a particularly weak draft, but the kid has so much to love. The more and more I watch of him, I mean, okay. This is a lot to say. Watching his film, if I, you know, couldn't see very well, if I had blurry vision of just watching his film, didn't know who he was or what color his jersey was, it looks like I'm watching Antonio Brown play. And again, I know that is crazy to say. That's a lot to put on a young guy. But Zay Flowers, man, I really, really like. I kind of wish he's been my draft crush for a little while. Again, I'm a Colts fan. I was hoping... If we kept this 35th overall and dropped a quarterback at four, there's a chance he made it there. It's not looking like it's going to happen. He just recently has gained a lot of steam and for good reason. I'm very stuck on if I want to take him here at 12 or not. I do not think I do. I think this receiver class just doesn't wow me, though. Man, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to stick with my gut. Sorry for taking so long on that pick. That's why I probably should write out what I want to do first. That is probably the highest you've watched him get drafted. I understand that. I love the player. I think he's going to be very good. And none of the other receivers really scream that they have to be taken here, in my opinion. So 
That that's who I like the best. It might change by draft day. As of right now, I think Zay Flowers is the best receiver on the board. I want to get my young quarterback a weapon. They need weapons badly in Houston. That's who I'm going with. Now, number 13 overall is the Jets. This is a pick where I go the same thing every time. I know it's boring. I know they need a quarterback. I'm not going to trade up for one here. I'm just going to go Peter Skaronsky. It makes sense. Not too much to talk about. Now, with the Patriots, another one that I've gone receiver a lot, but recently I've kind of opened up to the idea of picking a corner. I'm not not going Peter Skronsky, obviously. Broderick Jones, I think, is a little bit rich here. Uh, I think I'm going to go Devon Witherspoon. I think he... I mean, man. Him or Joey Porter Jr. are in my... Uh, Top tier, my top three are obviously Devon Witherspoon, Joey Porter, and Christian Gonzalez. I think all three of those players are very good. I like them all a lot. The Patriots got good play from their young corners. And again, Belichick's always going to get good play from his defense. Devon Witherspoon, I think, is a great player. You're sitting here at 14. You love him. You're going to draft him. He'll be a household name there in a year or two. Don't think about it too much. Green Bay. This is a pick that uh, I usually want to go with a weapon, almost always, actually. And uh, <laughs> looks like that's pretty much the consensus. I have experimented with Brian Branch once or twice. Haven't gone with a lineman before. But um, Brazil is still here, and I know you guys are probably yelling at me, but I'm just not very high on the guy. Good player. He will go in this first round, just not as high as most people have him going. Uh Typically, Quentin Johnson is gone here, and uh, I sound like I was just dogging on the guy. He's a good player. I'm going to take him. If he's here, I think Green Bay is very happy. He has the speed to be a serious separator. He needs to get a little better with his releases. He has flashes of releases that make me think he's going to be able to get there, and he could. Again, young. we're talking about draft prospects here. I'm not saying the guy should be perfect already, but he's kind of far from it, and... uh, he could get there. I've said I like him more than some do. A lot of people love him. Some people are a little lower on him than they should be, in my opinion. I want him to be a better contested catcher for his size. Other than that, I mean, releases, footwork, contested catching, all can be worked on. Uh, he needs to work on his hands a little bit. And again, sounds like I'm critiquing him, just ragging on him. This is because I love who he is. I like the player a lot. I'm high on him, and I, I think he can be very good. So I'm highlighting the things that if he does get better at, I think he will be a serious top 15 receiver, like year in, year out at least. So And top 15 sounds kind of low, but there's just so much talent in the league right now. Anyways, uh, Washington on the clock. I'm going to go look at – this is an interesting pick. I've gone corner most times. Quarterback is obviously the big if they could – I might play around with if they trade up one of these drafts and see what they could do. But uh, there's obviously not a quarterback worth taking here. I wonder if it's probably Tanner McKee. Yeah, I am not taking Tanner McKee here. Definitely not taking Hinton Hooker. This quarterback class, there's not really any, like, second-round try it guys. I mean, it's, it's the top four, and then you're pretty much done. If you don't get one of those four guys, you're drafting to get a backup. Um, but for Washington... I go corner a lot. I'm probably going to do it again. I'm going to... Where is he at? Joey Porter. He's a little low here for me. Uh, I like him a lot. Broderick Jones I like as well. Charles Leno has not played well this season. Uh, They got him in free agency a year or two ago and uh, two years ago. But he played well for a year and he started off this year okay. He just... It looks like he hit his wall. He's done. I mean, he'll probably be on a roster for a while. Be a guy that will play when someone's injured. But... Man, he looks like he's lost a step. So I'd consider Broderick Jones here, Dewan Jones as well, wherever they have him at. Did I miss him? I must have missed him. No, do they really have him that low? Now I'm curious. Goodness, they have him a lot lower than I do. I like Dewan Jones. He just had a monster senior bowl. Uh, had some really, really good reps against some good edge rushers, and obviously had the record longest wingspan ever, arms longer than Giannis, and it's hard not to fall in love with him. I've liked him since before that. I'm not just saying that's why I think he's this good. 
Uh, good player, though. I do like Dewan Jones more than most of those guys listed ahead of him. Anton Harrison's good as well. Any of those guys, I could see if the corners aren't here, but Joey Porter is, and I like Joey Porter quite a bit. So that's who I'm going to take. I think he's a really good player. Obviously, has great length. He's a great zone corner. I think he can play man well as well. And, uh, man, Washington just needs some uh, talent on the boundary. So that's what I'm going to go with. St. Juice has been good. Uh, obviously their corner play has been good with Cam Curl and Derek Forrest, but they just, they definitely could use another outside corner. Now, uh, the Steelers, I'm curious, does it like tell me teams that want to trade? That's interesting. I wonder if that's like realistic. Like, obviously we don't know if it's realistic. I just mean like if it's just random every time or if it's like, you know, got some data behind it, but so, yeah, corner and tackle, I think, are kind of the obvious what everyone wants to do here. Kenny Pickett made the uh, comment about Jordan Addison and wanting to get him back, obviously. Uh, they played together at Pitt, but I don't think that's the smartest idea. I guess it depends how much pull Kenny has. If they, you know, really trust him enough to let him make the pick, it might be Jordan Addison. But as of right now, it's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with... Probably Broderick Jones is my favorite tackle left. I think it makes sense. They need help in a couple of different positions. They're a, a young team with a smart future. Pardon me, a good future if they're smart. And I think building the trenches is the way to be smart. You know, you can never go wrong taking a tackle. I mean, obviously, there's been some bad tackles in recent years, like Alex Leatherwood, guys like that. But typically, we know if they're going to be a reach or not. And Broderick Jones is a guy I think is safe. You take him, you're going to get your tackle for however many years. And he'll be a good player. Now, the Lions' second pick. Does it tell me who I had them take? I know who it was, but I'm just curious. They've already got Miles Murphy. And uh, this pick, I, I've i been very big on double defense. Last time, I think I had him getting Brian Branch here, which I love. Obviously, I already kind of talked about how much I love him. I love that idea if I'm Detroit, but obviously he did not make it nearly this far this time. Now, with their second selection, they usually get one of Christian Gonzalez down this far would be wonderful. Cam Smith is a guy I, I'd probably go here. This is what I want to talk about. More people than I thought want B. John Robinson, and obviously I think he's a top five player in this draft probably. Don't hold me on that. I haven't written my whole big board out. I'll probably do that in the next week or two if you're interested. But uh, phenomenal player. Obviously going to be one of the best running backs pretty quickly in the league. But I think the run game is a strength in Detroit already. They drafted Swift pretty high just three years ago. And uh, he's still on his rookie deal. He doesn't need extended yet. And he's he's got some things he's not great at, but he's a good pass catching back. Jamal Williams, obviously a good late down back, uh, short yardage back. They... I think the defense needs help more than the run game does, but I get it. If they went Bijan Robinson, I would not be mad. I 100% understand the need to just take the best player available. Fuck it, because that offense, man, I won't get all the way into that, but it would be unstoppable. It would be so fun to watch. But uh, this is a spot where I already got a D lineman up front with Miles Murphy. I kind of want to go corner here. I think I actually have to, but Brazee is tempting here. If they can get Brazee and Miles Murphy, they have James Houston, Aiden Hutchinson, Romeo Quara. The, I mean, the, the front line would be pretty good. It's kind of tempting me. I'm talking myself into it, I think. I might do it. I really like Cam Smith, too, though. I'm just going to take Brazee. It makes sense. They need to help the run game. They need to help getting to the quarterback. He can do that. Last time we saw him fully healthy. That's that's. I'm very hesitant with Brazi because he just didn't look himself this last year. He didn't look as explosive, but it it's in there. He was a freak his first year starting, and I don't know. It's in there somewhere. So I don't hate him. I just don't like him top ten like everyone else does. Anyways, him and Miles Murphy would be a great pairing. If they can make out of the draft with that, I'm sure Lions fans would be ecstatic. I understand the secondary has needs. There's good free agent corners, though, and uh, I think you could kind of go that route for the defense, uh, defensive uh, backs, rather. But uh, just for the season, you know, the offense is great. 
The defense isn't, and just getting young talent like that, you can't pass up. On to Tampa. This team just got a lot more interesting with Brady announcing his retirement. A lot. This is a landing spot for Bijan for a lot of people. I guess not as many on this side as on like mock drafts I watch, but a lot of people like Bijan Robinson here. I just don't get it. Quarterback is the most picked position. I mean, I'm not going with Tanner McKee here, but uh, there it's become quickly a team that went from winning a Super Bowl to having a lot of needs. Uh, I really feel like you can't go all the way wrong. It's just going to be very eh, no matter who you pick. Man. See, I'm not... Osiris Torrance is the one I like here. Only player here I think I'm really looking at. Uh, Mayer is a great player. I don't quite understand why this many people are taking him for a team with this many needs. I don't think a tight end, when you don't even have a quarterback, really elevates your team very much. So... I might go Torrance. Originally, I mean, I want to go guard, but I feel like it's just a little bit rich. But I like him a lot. I'm not going to think too much. They they could go a lot of ways. I could see it being Van Ness. I could see it being Nolan Smith. I could see it being wherever he is. Goodness. I am not used to their big board. Foskey, apparently they got him super low, unless I just missed him. Yeah, there's no way they got him that low. Is there? Goodness. What? Goodness. That is interesting to say the least. But anyways, I like Foskey more than that. Uh, Seattle is back on the clock. Earlier, they traded down and grabbed their pick of the corners, which was Christian Gonzalez. And now I think there's a player that I talked about earlier who I would take here, and that is Trenton Simpson. They need help in the front seven. Jordan Brooks just tore his ACL, will not play a lot of next season. It's going to be rough. Trenton Simpson's a great prospect, best linebacker in the draft. Take him right here and be happy about it. Now, Miami's picks forfeited onto the Chargers. This is a uh, an interesting, for me, a lot of times I go with uh, the fastest receiver they can get, and Zay Flowers is a guy that if they can make it there, I would be so happy if I'm a Chargers fan. He's obviously not in this case. So it comes down to me, to Jordan Addison being the best fit at receiver right here. Uh, I think JSN is not a bad pick. Obviously, he's not necessarily the speed guy. He's more of a Keenan Allen than a game-breaking speed receiver you need. Jordan Addison is... We don't know necessarily if he's going to be a game-breaking receiver. He's got a lot more of the skill set you want. I think about Michael Mayer as well because, again, not a speed guy, but definitely not a speed guy, but a great player who's going to make your passing game that much better. But um, they just got Kellen Moore. They're going to want to take a little bit more shots than they did last year. Jordan Addison, obviously, they, they need another receiving threat. I know it sounds silly to some people who don't, no offense, are a little bit more casual. They look at the team and think, oh, they got Eckler and Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. They've got plenty. They need they need a speed receiver. Jalen Guyton, who's been injured since week three, cannot be your uh, your only speed option downfield when Justin Herbert is at the helm. You've got to make something happen. Herbert is going to get extended this offseason. He's no longer going to be on a rookie deal. Got to get some weapons that are on a rookie deal if you want to try to compete in this window. Now, the Ravens here. This is a uh, another interesting pick where I've gone multiple different directions. JSN on the board, though, that's who I'm going with. I'm not even gonna really look at it and think much. I think a receiver. They're they're not they're not trading Lamar Jackson. Maybe they do, and I look stupid. If anybody wants to bet me on it, we can. They're gonna franchise tag him. It's gonna be an exclusive franchise tag, and their only way they trade him is if they absolutely cannot, for whatever reason, get a deal done. And I think the only way that's possible is if he looks at him and says, I don't want to play for Baltimore. They're going to hand him whatever he wants if it comes down to it. So get him a weapon. He needs it. I mean, I think anybody would agree with that. The Vikings, I'm going Cam Smith. They need a corner in the worst way. They go corner a lot. 
but they need one. Cam Smith is a great player. He's still here. I don't think too much about it. This one right here. <sighs> Joey Porter. That'd be cool. Uh, I don't have Joey Porter available, obviously. I think this is interesting. I kind of like this about the PFF site. They show you what the consensus is. It's interesting to see everyone else's opinion. They have Broderick Jones, like the fifth player. Obviously, he's not here, but I think I might go tackle as well. That's what I'm... I kind of would prefer an interior lineman here, but I don't know that I love any of the ones left. Uh, Michael Schmitz is a guy that I've liked a lot more recently, and I think will be maybe better than we think. I might be mocking him in the first round sooner than later. Don't know that I'm going this high quite yet. So uh, looking at the board, Anton Harrison is probably the guy I like. Not, I'm not in love with any of these... Uh, fits necessarily it's there's nothing like none of them are bad there's a lot of good players available but uh antonio johnson is also tempting that might be what i do to be honest i think antonio johnson's a really good secondary player he can obviously help the defense a good amount the offense next year in jackson doesn't be very good anton harrison's tempting as well obviously you can never pass up a tackle but i'm gonna go antonio johnson i haven't done that yet something fun i think he could help that team a lot Great player. I think he's a little bit underrated right now. Now, the New York Giants are a team that also needs a receiver. Josh Downs is the only other guy I'm really considering. Uh, and, man, I haven't done this yet, and it's a little bit silly. I'm thinking Michael Mayer. It's not necessarily silly, I don't even think. I know a lot of Giants fans I've talked to like Bellinger a lot. I get it. He had some good games. Michael Mayer, man, is a very, very good tight end. I think he's going to be a game changer immediately. This tight end class, though, has some great... All three of these guys here as well are also going to be good tight ends in the league. Uh, probably one of the best tight end classes we've seen in a minute. So Michael Mayer, he's not a receiver, but he is a weapon for Danny Dimes next year. You're going to need that in some, some form. You're going to have to. Now, with Dallas... Oh, man... I don't know how Dallas fans feel about this pick. I'm going with B. John Robinson. Am I? See, my thing is, Zeke is going to be back. We know that. Jerry Jones is not getting rid of Zeke, whether he restructures his deal or what. He's good in pass pro. No, I'll say that for now. He's good in pass pro. But uh, Tony P. is great. He suffered a serious injury. We don't know what his timetable is. He'll probably be back next season. He's a free agent, though. Are they going? I, I think that kind of puts some question marks around that. Is Are they going to bring him back now that he got injured? Or they're going to have to pay him or tag him, which will essentially give him a good amount of money. But they're not you know, stuck with that much money for any more than a year. So I could see a world where they franchise tag Tony P and bring him back. But it's just so Jerry Jones to go with B. John Robinson, and that's what I'm going to do. He is one of the best players in this draft. He is a freaky, freaky athlete, like, player more, not athlete, he's not like a freak athlete, but just, like, watching him play is, like, it's honestly dumbfounding, he's not got the breakaway speed necessarily, but other than that, he's just such a natural at the running back position, I love B. John Robinson, I'm pretty sure everyone does, it's not like a hot take or anything, he's just going to step in the league and be a very good running back immediately, I'm very excited to watch him play, Obviously, the Cowboys like to have their uh, big-time players like that. So, Bijan's the pick there for me. Not going to... I know I don't even love it. Cowboys fans probably won't love it. Great player, though. Going to be fun to watch. And I could. it's just such a Jerry Jones pick to me. Now, Buffalo. This is the guy I like here most times. Osiris Torrance. He is gone. And as I mentioned previously, the interior linemen in this class, man, they're good but not right here. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I just, I, there's nobody here I really want this high. So I'm not going to take anyone. I'm not going to force it. And I'm probably going to go DB, which is the next position that they need badly. Let me just sort, because I do not know what their big board looks like. Pardon me. And I'm going to go with Keely Ringo. I think I did this last time as well. I don't love it, but I think the player could be very good. 
He's uh, not quite the top 10 talent we thought he was a little while ago. The other thing, you know what? Scratch everything I just said. I'm going to go with Josh Downs. Now, this might or might not be a great pick. Gabe Davis is not a wide receiver, too. I know. I know a lot of people don't like that opinion. Gabe Davis is not the guy you guys thought he was. I'm sorry. And Isaiah McKenzie is not great. Cole Beasley, not great. Dawson Knox has his games. It's just digs out there, man. And obviously the line needs help. Again, interior is what I want to go. No one I love here. They need more weapons. And I know, I know everyone's, oh, they got Josh Allen and Diggs. They've got to get over the hump. How? They're not winning because the O-line is bad and they don't have weapons. They're not going to go very far in the playoffs. I don't know why they were the far and away favorites for the Super Bowl. I think people get way too caught up in star power and, oh, Josh Allen's going to be the MVP and they're going to... You've got to have a good roster to win football games. Sean McDermott is not an elite tier coach where he's going to get him over the hump by himself. He's a good coach. He is not one of those guys, though. He's not going to compete with Andy Reid, etc., unless he has a very good roster. They've got to get more weapons. That's something I've thought for a very long time. A lot of people did not agree before the season. I thought the Bills were a bit overrated and needed more firepower on offense. Proved to be true. I'm going to get him a receiver. I almost went with a corner. I just can't do it, though. I think Ringo might be the higher player on a lot of people's boards here, but Josh Downs isn't going to be asked to be the one, obviously. He could be a very good supplemental to push McKenzie to being a three or Gabe Davis, whoever you look at. They're neither one are a very good player, but they're fine, and they're not bad players. They just can't be asked to carry the load of a wide receiver two on a pass-heavy offense. You know what I mean? Now, on to the Bengals. This is uh, very obvious. I'm not even going to talk about it before I click it. Anton Harrison, man, if you watched any of the uh, Bengals games the last probably like seven, eight weeks, the O-line is not what we thought it was going to be. Not that we thought it was going to be great, but they made upgrades. They definitely made an effort to upgrade it this offseason. And, man, it did not really work that well. I know there was injuries, and it's a big, big reason why a lot of injuries but they still got to add to it, man. That they, The O-line's not good. Now, the Saints. Uh, this has been the Broncos pick for a while, and I've been trading it to the Saints for a while because I felt very strongly that this is what was going to happen, and it did. So uh, this is actually my first time mocking the Saints in the first round. <laughs> CJ Stroud is the play. Bryce Young? How are 50% of people getting a quarterback here? I'm assuming a lot of people have the Saints trading up. That has to be, that's a lot of people. I don't know what they're going to trade to go up to like top five. But anyways, I'm looking at probably, you know what? Ika or Ringo is who I'm thinking immediately. And I like Ika a lot. I think I like him more than I like Ringo. I like Ika a lot. So that's who I'm going to go with. I think Siaki Ika is a great player. I think he's going to go higher than this, to be quite honest. I think as the offseason progresses, we will uh, hear a lot more of his name, and he will be up players' boards more. But as of right now, here's where he's going. I think uh, great player, out of need, and they're not going to get a quarterback here. I mean, maybe Tanner McKee. I don't mock him in the first round ever, but I guess. I don't know. Uh I think the Saints are kind of more in the, you know, trade for a quarterback and or tank for a quarterback. Not that they're going to actually tank, but maybe give Andy Dalton a year and then next year's quarterback's class is very good. Now, the Chiefs and the Eagles, the two teams in the Super Bowl, congrats if you cheer for either of them. It's been a interesting postseason, to say the least. Uh, I think both of these teams are in very different spots. They obviously are both elite teams, are both in the Super Bowl. But uh, the Eagles have a lot better roster. The Chiefs have some things they definitely could go with. Ojolari is a guy I take a lot. Josh Downs is a guy I've taken a lot. He's not here for me. Uh, Ika is an interesting one. I have not taken Ika. Obviously, he's not available for me either. I kind of like that idea. But... uh. Let me see. The receivers, Tank Dell, I, I, I like him. 
There's nobody I really am in love with here. I think Xavier Hutchinson is too low on these boards. I wouldn't take him quite this high. Dontavion Wicks had a great senior bowl. Ronnie Bell. I don't agree with a lot of the placing on this uh, big board here, but um, I don't like Rasheed Rice as much as a lot of people do. Jalen Hyatt, kind of same story. Uh, Tank Dell I could, I could see probably a little too early, so... No one I love at this spot, but I think receiver is definitely a position you look at if you're uh, if you're Kansas City. But obviously, there's nobody here that I love. Ojolari makes a lot of sense. Nolan Smith makes sense. Van Ness has been flying off people's boards recently. Kind of came out of nowhere. I'm not as high as him on everyone else is. Pardon me, everyone else is yet. Full discrepancy. I have not done a full dive into his film or made a scouting report on him yet. So uh, don't feel that I'm necessarily educated enough to make a full statement. I have watched him play. I do have opinions on him, but I feel like whatever I say is not uh, my full opinion. I, I don't have enough knowledge to really say how I compare him to Nolan Smith or B.J. Ojolari or Isaiah Foskey or any of the other guys. So right now I'm not going to take him here. As of my current standings, I have him in the second round. I will dive into some more films soon, though. I'm interested because, again, People are putting him super high, so I want to see what the hype's about. I will watch him. As of right now, he's a day two guy for me. I'm going to go with BJ Ojolari. Uh, Nolan Smith is definitely in play. I'm going to go with Nolan Smith. I lied to you. I like Nolan Smith better. Uh, I think BJ Ojolari, the fit there, has made sense for a long time, and that's what I've done a lot of times. Nolan Smith's a better player, though, so I'm not really going to stress too much about it. Now, with the Eagles' second pick, Again, top 10, they ended up getting Brian Branch, who was a great player. I, I really cannot talk enough about him. I think he's great. But now I think this is probably where I'd go with Tanner McKee. I'm just kidding, obviously. But, uh, again, a lot of these players are off the board. I do not – I think these players are all going to go higher than this. So I do agree that edge and corner are positions of need here. I did take Brian Branch pretty high, who is listed at safety, but will play slot corner probably. So I'm looking at maybe a Van Ness or an Ojolari here. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll just give Van Ness his props and put him here at the end of my round one because I have him as a day two guy right now, as I said, but obviously there's something I don't know. I need to watch some more. I liked him when I watched him. But it's been a minute, and I need to update myself, go see uh, you know, what the hype's about. But it seems like he might go first round, so that's where I'll give you. Van Ness to the Eagles at 31. Now, if you stuck around this long, first of all, I really appreciate you. Thank you for watching. I know I talk a lot. It's kind of who I am, though. Appreciate you being here, watching my videos. Uh, I just like to ramble. I like talking football. So go comment what you think, whether it's good or not. I don't care if you're flaming my picks. Whatever you thought about what I did for your team, let me know. Any other team, whatever you want to talk about, I would love to discuss in the comments. Uh, again, there's probably some things if I refresh and did it again, I would change on this one. Uh, I kind of just did it on the fly, what I was feeling at the moment. But again, my next mock draft will be a two-rounder, and it will be thought out. I will have the picks ready, and I'm going to spend a good amount of time picking what I like rather than uh, doing it on the fly. So... That, along with some prospect rankings, big boards, you know, quarterback rankings, receiver rankings, etc. Maybe some film reviews if anybody's interested in that. I understand the majority of my viewers watch my mock drafts, and I appreciate you guys being here for that. But I will be posting some other content as well if anyone has interest. I'll stop talking. I know I have been for probably like 45 minutes now, maybe even longer. But uh, I appreciate you again one more time, and hope you all have a wonderful day. Eagles and Chiefs fans, good luck in the Super Bowl.